Hey everybody, this is a speed paint tutorial on how to draw this classic Donald Duck comic book cover number 408 from 1952 drawn originally by Carl Barks. Um, I just felt like drawing a comic book cover and a good friend of mine runs a uh, YouTube channel uh, as a tribute to the work of Carl Barks and he sent me this one and uh, it was a lot of fun to draw. So i um, drawing in Proc uh, Procreate here using my Apple Pencil and this iPad is an iPad Pro probably, I can't remember what generation it is, it's two back from I think the current one right now. It doesn't have the camera with the third, third lens or anything in it. Um, anyway, it's still great. Here I am roughing it out. I always do, whenever I'm doing uh, artwork like this, I do three layers at, at a minimum. First layer is pencil, then ink, then color. And in this case, you'll see there's some extra layers down the road once we get um, to uh, inking this and, and doing the color, um, adding the color because there are some tricky things in there like the golden helmet. You could see you can't really see it uh, in the upper left there where it overlaps the uh, the Donald Duck um, masthead on the comic book there just slightly over the O so um, kind of have to handle that a little bit separately. Uh, here I'm just roughing it out. You'll see it's, it starts out very very rough. I've drawn vertical and horizontal lines to kind of block out uh, the center of the cover and then the horizon line um, which is below uh, halfway where the water is and then I'm starting with our main character Donald and roughing him out and you'll see as I draw um, I started out very rough and then I kind of refine as I go and you can see he's starting to take shape here some of the cool things about these characters are that, you know, their the shapes of their heads are almost perfect circles. So you can take advantage of the uh, circle tool in uh, Procreate to be able to kind of um, get close to that. So you see Donald starting to take shape. And I'm also using the selection tool and the arrow tool to move things around because as you start to go, um, you know, I'm not tracing this, I'm drawing it by eye. So I'm looking at the cover and then I'm kind of trying to position things. And as you start to do that, you'll, if, well, unless you block it out perfectly, um, the first time, which I never do, um, things start, you start to realize that the relationship between some elements needs to change. Like here, I'm drawing his left arm and it's way too short, you'll see. So now I've just actually had to make him a bit smaller so I could extend the arm because other than that, it was just going to look weird because he's holding the map with that hand. And then on the right hand side, you know, even the original, is that hand is kind of short, maybe it's a perspective thing. So again, just roughing out his body, trying to get, because he's the focal point of this cover, so I want to get him you know, as perfect as possible, spend a lot of time on him. This video is sped up like uh, 20, at least 20 times the actual because I'm very slow at doing this stuff so I mean, some people probably draw at this speed normally I do not so but you can see uh, Donald starting to take shape I'm really happy with the way uh, he came out even though it kind of took me a while to, to get there um, and here in the pencil stage you know I'll, I'll use some of the built-in tools like the arc tool and all that stuff as, as much as possible but um, it's really just more about capturing the spirit and then kind of refining as we go right there his leg is too wide so you'll see that I'm gonna have to go up and select that and move it over now it's the correct width and then fill in the details kind of refine I've been drawing cartoons comics um, just this well even on paper f since I was a kid um, so I still love doing this kind of thing it's just uh, for me it's very relaxing and a lot of fun and on Procreate, it's amazing because you can really bring it to life. Getting Donald's pretty, pretty, uh, looking pretty good there. Um, now the detail on the helmet, these are the golden feathers, kind of doing that. And again, you know, positioning things and moving things so that everything starts to work together. That's the great thing about this, this tool is you could just, you know, you can undo things, you can 
adjust things. You can move things around. I don't know how they did it uh, in the old days, but uh, and I find now if I actually draw on paper, I tap twice on on the paper, thinking that somehow I'm going to erase what I've just drawn with a pencil, which is very weird. So uh, it's amazing how you get used to this stuff. Helmets taking shape here. There's so many nice details in this cover. Right here, um, these are some, I guess, hieroglyphics that Carl drew into the helmet. And the one, that top row on the far left, to me, that looks like a, a little tribute to Walt Disney. I could be wrong, but it looks like it looks like a W. If you zoom in on it, it looks like a sideways or an angled W, very similar to the Walt Disney logo. Here we're getting all the feather kind of details in there. I try to get as much detail as I can uh, when I draw the characters like this um, so that when I get to the inking stage, there's less guesswork. So um, that's why you'll see, like, I'll start, I'll draw a line and then very rough and then start to refine it and um, erase the, the uh, work line so that when I go to ink it, um, I'm following what I've already spent hours drawing. This is Louie. Uh, he is uh, wearing green in the in the cover. Carl had uh, very specific kind of ways to um, identify the brothers here. So uh, I believe Huey is wearing red, and in this cover, Dewey's wearing yellow, and then this is Louie wearing green. And their heads are almost perfect circles as well. Um, they're even more of perfect circle, like closer to a perfect circle than Donald's is. But you start there, and then you kind of adjust as necessary. So here, um, working on Huey and drawing his, his baseball cap, and then I have a little challenge as I'm kind of drawing this one with the eyes, um, mostly on Huey. For some reason, as I was kind of drawing the eyes, he started to they weren't they weren't aligned correctly. Um, so I took some time to adjust that. It's amazing. Right, right now, you see his left eye is up too high, and he looks a little crazy. So <laughs> it took a little bit before I kind of got that adjusted, but the um, the end result worked out beautifully. So you're just drawing his his bill, and then the little feathers at the top. Those are nice touches. A little detail on the side of the hat, kind of fixing the eye. It took uh, it took several goes at at kind of adjusting the eye so that we ended up with uh, less crazy. There we go. Um, I think that one's still slightly off. I think I probably end up redoing this one again and resizing the eyes, re-angling them. But again, with the uh, with that selection tool, you can do this kind of stuff um, easily and then kind of reposition things and, and get it so it's just right. Just fixing the eye here. Still got a little bit of crazy here. Let's fix this. And uh, Carl was uh, famous for uh, putting those little slices in the eyes. And you'll note that on each of the brothers, the slices are in different positions. So on the Bon uh, Huey with the uh, just to Donald's to the left of Donald um, he's got them coming up from the bottom and then uh, the brothers have them coming in from different sides I don't know if he always did that but uh, certainly in this one he did this is 1952 I think it's a pretty amazing cover I just I love the artwork and just think it's kind of amazing uh, that people could do this kind of illustration And to me, like even the cover of the way he kind of overlaps the helmet over the type, that's, that to me, it seemed like such an amazing thing for that time. Maybe they did it before. Maybe they always kind of did that stuff. Um, but that's something you see now in magazines where, you know, Vogue or something like that has a person on the cover and then their, their hair will uh, go into the logo a little bit and kind of overlap it. It looks really cool. And here we're getting those classic Disney hands. Um, there we go. 
Each of the brothers are holding those giant blocks too. Those look so heavy. I think Carl did an amazing job of making those look heavy too and looking so realistic. Here I'm just roughing out the blocks because everything, as I said, everything really works together. And if you are the slightest bit off, you start to realize it very quickly. Like in this block, um, I think I didn't draw it deep enough so that his, you know, so you can see now I'm kind of adjusting that, making it a little deeper. And this, my illustration, you, uh, if you were to overlay it over top the cover, it is not... Uh, exactly, not everything's in the in the right place. I think I think my uh, my horizon line. I think my water looks tilted when I look at it now, but still pretty close. I was very very happy with the way it came out. Um, here, just adjusting this block, and then there's the uh, the ship um, carved into the rock, and Carl did an amazing job making that look like it was really carved in there. Again, for a comic book, you know. Here we're getting the rest of the kind of blocks so that everything's kind of arranged in that same way. And then he's got these little stones. I love the way he did all the detail he did on the stones. Um, the color doesn't quite uh, go edge to edge. Now roughing out this hand letter text, and if you haven't tried this before, uh, hand lettering is very, very hard to do. Um, and there are people out there that are amazing at it. I am not one of them. Uh, but uh, what I did is I kind of sketched out the the name, or the, sorry, the masthead at first, and then kind of tried to fill it in. Again, looking at how each letter um, is connected to the next and then um, I think I realized I ended up being uh, a little too short on the width so I, but again I was able to resize it this I did on a separate layer from even the other the rest of the pencil just because uh, I was gonna have to do stuff like this I knew I was gonna have to move it around and if you if I drew that uh, overlapping the the main illustration and the pencil there I wouldn't have I, I would have had to erase it rather than just sort of kind of select it and make it larger so here I'm just getting the last letter kind of drawn and then that you'll see like this then you realize I've I haven't drawn it wide enough so but that's why I'm able to kind of go in fill in some detail on this and then I can uh, select it and then there we go and make it wider so now it's the correct width and I've got it overlapping the own. I have it overlapping even more so just because uh, I think it looks really great. And Carl made this hand lettering stuff look so easy. I uh, struggled with it, quite honestly, and I think I cheated later on the words and and the. So there's the pencil, which I was thought was pretty cool. I was happy with that. Now I'm going to start to ink it. So new layer and... Uh, inking is a whole different world um, if you're new to procreate uh, it does ha you do have the ability to kind of draw a curve and then hold the pencil still until uh, procreate kind of catches it and then it will give you the ability to smooth like move that curve around until you get it just right sometimes though you have to take a number of tries uh, and you'll see I've left some of the tries in here but uh, if we if I left in all my tries this video would be three hours long even sped up so there we got a line pretty good uh, multiple tries on that second line and then I'm gonna go in and kind of refine it a bit if you're able to get the line to go in in one fluid motion that's when you'll get your smooth lines if if you don't do that then the lines can get pixelated. But what I do here, and I'm doing this right now, uh, is I'll smooth the line out as much as I can. See that eyebrow uh, line went, and those ones all went in one go, and look how smooth those are. So for some of the other ones that didn't kind of work out that way, um, I'll take the eraser tool and kind of refine and kind of uh, chip away at them and, and get them refined, kind of like I'm doing here. Do his bow tie here, and you can get that beautiful tapered kind of uh, effect too on the with the pen. This is I should mention this is I'm just using stock 
uh, brushes on this. This is the technical uh, pencil or technical pen under inking and uh, I didn't normally use that. I used to use the studio brush but I was watching it was a Jim Lee or somebody I was watching a great um, uh, comic book illustrator who drew more kind of like Marvel characters and he used the technical pencil so I did that thickened it up a bit uh, didn't modify it but just used it on a thicker weight and then was able to do that and then when you drag the color from the upper right into a filled area like that little tassel on his hat that's when you can fill that in see how these lines are um, if you can do them in one go press and hold and then get that beautiful angle um, it looks really slick like that and then just touching up you can go you can zoom in if you zoom in really really um, close you can start to see when things pixelate but those smooth lines if you draw them if you get them smooth like that then they don't pixelate and then you can touch up as you're going along and then I got that tapered look by erasing on an angle there that fold on his shirt draw the buttons again press and hold when you draw a circle and you can you can get the oval um, like that and that created those beautiful buttons like that same I did the same when I did the eyes and then look going back and sort of touching up some things there sometimes I'll and quite often I'll preview the ink layer and by turning off the pencil just to see how things are looking you know because you might get a false sense of uh, of what it's looking at like if you keep the pencil layer on because the pencil may be adding to the line thickness as an example here just drawing the the base of the helmet and trying to use those angled or those uh, sort of arced lines a little bit you can also edit those arced lines if you press and hold and create an arc like let's see I got a straight line on that one um, once you've drawn it at the top uh, there that little light gray bar at the top will say edit and you can go and then sometimes not all the time but it, sometimes it may show you arc and then you, it's almost like a bezier curve from illustrator and you can uh, grab the, the handles on that and kind of adjust the line so that it follows the correct curve um, so far I haven't discovered like I can't you can't do an S shape and hold and then have it catch the double curve there uh, maybe other people know how to do that but I have to kind of do it in multiple stages but um, that's something as I was doing this I started to get better at so you always le learn something uh, new whenever you do these kinds of things here drawing more of the golden feathers and using using those uh, beautiful curves like that getting very fussy about how those are working out but you see and there see at the top there's that that ball at the top of the helmet draw the circle as close to the to perfect as you can press and, and hold and then the procreate will give you a perfect circle and then you can adjust it and you can drag it to make it bigger or smaller I did those other um, curved lines just underneath that uh, stacked part of the helmet uh, that same way with, with arcs as well here just filling in the hieroglyph hieroglyphics you could see the W on the left of that first row where that was talking about that Walt Disney kind of thing here and just adding in some of these details some of them are like this is a, a bird and then we've got a snake here some of them are you can't really distinguish what they are but I think it's just more the point is just kind of creating those hieroglyph hieroglyphics here again using more of the uh, of the I don't know what they call it but it's kind of the auto uh, arc and then creating that tapered look by using the uh, eraser to kind of f uh, fix those things and getting in giving some more detail like in the bow tie there and then the slices in Donald's eyes coming in from the left side thickening up the lines there and love that thumb looks so you know close to Disney which I know Carl did it and it is Disney but it's you know when you actually recreate it it's kind of harder to do than you'd think drawing the map uh, there's a lot of cool detail on this map I ended up redoing the line yeah and then sort of chipping away at it you, it's better to start that way and then you make it a dotted line 
and then uh, pressing, uh, drawing a, a line. So start point and the end point. Leave, keep your pen on the screen. Uh, then Procreate will give you the option to make it a straight line. So that came in handy there for the grid lines over the map. And then just using some stipple um, things to kind of give that uh, land a bit of a sandy look. And then hand lettering. Not nearly as good as Carl, but... I have a little trouble with the D there. All right. So this is coming along. Uh, I'm just still not happy with the D. I think I probably could do this all day long. All right. So it's starting to come together. Now let's get the brothers. See all those arcs are you know you follow the curve as close as you can to where you want it to be and then you hold on and then procreate fills in the rest for you and then you can even erase like i did there got rid of the rest of that uh, that eye and then with the slices on uh, huey here coming up from the bottom this is where i started to get better at the curves right so um what i'm doing when i'm uh, creating a, um, a curve that has multiple different turns and it is drawing the first part of the curve, press and hold, make sure that the shape matches where I want it to be, then keeping my pen where it is, then continue doing the next turn and the same and following it all the way around. And then I got very, very smooth lines. And then in cases like this, I was able to kind of fill in the line um, as close as possible and then use the eraser tool. You can also do the same thing, the press and hold on with the eraser tool if you want to erase apart but you want it to actually be perfectly smooth you do the same thing with the eraser so you you start and you arc your curve to match where you want to erase and then you press and hold on the screen and then you can move it around very handy to do that then you get those beautiful tapered lines like that the brothers are, they look so similar that you think that oh you could draw one and then duplicate it and and create the other but that wasn't really the case, uh, so I ended up drawing everybody separately. Slices on Dewey's eyes are coming in from the left side, and Huey beside him are coming up from the bottom. You can see that right there. Ink in the hands here. There's so much great detail in this, and you, it makes you really, you know, see, I'm drawing the circle for uh, this is Louis. That arc worked out beautifully. Then you just erase what you don't need. <laughs> it got very fussy on the cap here. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with that. But that one I did in multiple uh, tries. Then the little uh, feathers at the top here again create some great uh, smooth lines with those and that that was a case right there with his so his face coming from the feathers at the top all the way down to that curve pressing and holding keeping it and then doing the next and the next it made it for um, very smooth and very quick to do and the slices are coming in from the right hand side on Louis here probably going to find after I post this video that I've got the characters names wrong. Uh, doing the water, same kind of thing. It, it's sped up so you're not seeing but press and hold as you draw the curve and then do the next one and keeping your pen in place so that it continues on from where from where you left off after you have got the um, the assistance uh, from Procreate to create that line to make a curved line smooth like this. Filling in some detail. Carl did an amazing job on this to make these look like really heavy bricks. Or, or rocks drawing in the shadow off the foot looking back I probably would have done the shadow on a separate layer so that and set it to multiply so that you'd actually get the texture of the rock and a shadow set to maybe 90% so it gets a little more it looks a little more realistic but I just did it full on black I just filled it as we did it
<coughs> Sorry, I need a drink of water. Drawing the ship. So here, um, this is to look like it's um, carved into the rock. So the uh, the shadow, because the sun would be uh, behind them uh, over the water, most likely, um, the shadow would be at the bottom. So that's why the lines are thicker there. And then getting trying to get those Disney hands. Subtle detail there, nice taper on the sweater, and then getting the sleeve, using the eraser to get that taper again. Here we go. Again, got that beautiful curve. I don't know what I'm doing suddenly right now. Apparently, I'm taking a break. There we go. Um, do you see, you saw it was very quick, but um, there were some uh, dots that appeared on that one line there on the bottom of his shirt where the wrinkle of the shirt was. And I was able to edit that and kind of adjust that line so it followed the curve that way I wanted it to go. Here, just drawing in detail, but this is so important, you know, filling in all these detail, all these little shadows and little rock curves and everything like that. And you don't realize it, and like you just, you got to spend the time and do this. Um, and then, you know, later on when you go back to um, putting the color and everything like that, you'll actually be amazed. Um, I was kind of blown away when I sort of saw all the detail that had gone into it. And I did not do this illustration in one sitting. I think, uh, I think it took me six hours to do the pencil. I shouldn't say that, but it did. But uh, that's because I'm slow at this stuff. But the more you do it, the better you get. Getting some nice uh, rock formations here off to the right hand side just before the water. More detail on the, in the rocks. And we're almost done. This is this inking is almost done. Just filling in some last minute details and you know some things that I realized I kind of missed. You know, there's a little shadow under the bow tie like that. But what a difference. What a difference it makes. Little you know, little heavier lines on the sides of the faces of the brothers. Cleaning some things up here. This is important to do. There we go. On the map, every last detail. Okay, now I'm drawing, now I'm doing the hand lettering. And this is way harder than it looks. So, and again, I roughed it out. And I'm using the press and hold uh, assistance from... Uh, Procreate here to kind of get these. I really struggled with this end. Um, but here we go. And you can see that it's starting to take shape. I'm drawing the letters. The, the letters do overlap, and the, where, the, where they do overlap, I will go back and erase that. But right now, let's just, it's most important to get the letter shapes correct. So let's just get this. We're almost done this one. I cheated here because I had drawn uh, the duck. Uh, part of the masthead first uh, and then duplicated the D because I didn't like the way I did the first part so I had done when I did uh, the second part of the headline uh, really uh, like the way that turned out I had to go back and redo it so now I'm going back and kind of fixing those little parts where the letters overlap look and get the taper in between those two and then that's done that's the inking part Okay, so now, next thing, add color. So add a new layer. I created a color palette from the comic book. I literally imported the comic book illustration into the Procreate and then press and, uh, press and hold on each color and created a custom palette for this. And you can download that palette below in, in the notes um, if you, in case you want to do this. I've also got a black and white uh, coloring version for you if anybody wants to color it or give it to somebody to color. And you can see here, um, the way I get the shading is I selected, I filled the water, and then I used the selection tool and touched on each of the parts of the water and made sure to get all of them, even, even the ones under Donald and between Donald and Huey and, and all of that. And then um, was able to use the airbrush tool and kind of go across it 
uh, it was almost like masking. It was very exactly like masking off the the rest of the character, so that I was just um, uh, dealing with the airbrushing on on the uh, on the water. Now I did the sky on a separate layer, and you'll see that see all of those rocks where the details of the white and everything like that. Okay, when I do the sky next, or actually I can do the map first, but when I do the sky, it fills in and you'll see that the sky actually starts to show through on the rocks, which looks terrible. So um, I'll show you how to fix that. So now I'm doing the parchment, the map is, and then creating the sand, coloring on those last things, give a bit of a glow before I created the, um, before I colored in the sand, and then I wanted to make the parchment a bit lighter. And give it a little highlight there. Okay, so now, uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to fill in the color. So it's so easy to fill in the, the color on these things. See, when I filled in the sky, everything below went blue. So I had to fill in white. I had to put white on uh, all the main characters and then uh, go and touch up. Then under the sky, I just erased that part underneath there because it was showing through in the white parts of the rock. So rather than go in and kind of retouch all of the white things I, on, on the rocks. I just kind of erased that and that took care of that problem. Here just adding some shiny uh, gold to the to the helmet and then some detail of the shading there on the inside. And then I forgot some details, some just subtle little light, very light blue kind of uh, accent lines uh, that Carl did on uh, on Donald's face and then uh, on his body as well. And they were f obviously harder to do than they look. <laughs> so then uh, that one's done and there's a little bit on the thumbs as well. And there's one on the body is done. Now it's done. The one on the left is uh, the original by Carl and the one on the right is the one that I just did and that you just watched me do. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, please like this video, and then hit the notification bell for the next time that I release video. And thank you very much for watching.